to understanding your financials. Well, in this video, we're going to go through uh, the financials, basically looking at the three report cards that you get either out of your, um, your QuickBooks or your Simply Accounting or the year end you get from your accountant. Firstly, I guess I want to speak to the, the why understand your financials. The long and the short is the language of business is numbers. And the key numbers that we want to understand are the ones that talk about the money that we're either making or we're not making. And to be able to make the right decisions in, the, in your business, it's absolutely crucial that we understand what these report cards are telling us. Now, all too often, I, I come across uh, entrepreneurs and business owners, they get their year end from their accountant, but they may not look at it, it may just be done for tax purposes, and not really looking at it and analyzing it to make their decisions. So I want to change that for you. I want you to be able to understand which reports do I need to be looking at, and when I look at them, what are they telling me? What do they mean, and uh, how do I make decisions off that? So we're going to start off, before I get into the three report cards, I'm going to talk briefly about accrual versus cash accounting. Now this is a little bit of uh, accounting jargon if you like. Essentially, most businesses, like 95% of businesses on the planet would use accrual accounting versus cash accounting. Now cash accounting refers to only recording the entries in your, in your system when you physically get the cash or when you physically pay cash for something. For most businesses, as I said, we use accrual, which means that we record the entry the moment the intention for something to happen uh, occurs. Let me give you an example. Let's say you make a sale, uh, someone signs off on a purchase order, sends you a purchase order, and you've, you've got record of the sale, you might at that point issue an invoice, but doesn't mean you receive the cash immediately. That invoice gets recorded in your, uh, in your system, and then it may be a period of time before you actually receive the cash. So that means that each of the entries we're making in our system doesn't necessarily correspond to when the cash is actually coming in and going out. Now that's actually a good thing uh, because it allows us to keep records more accurately. The downside is that we have to really understand each of these three reports for us to be able to understand what's going on in our business. As we know, cash is extremely important, how we manage cash, so these reports can tell you what's happened uh, with cash. The other thing to understand about cash, and you'll see this in one of the other videos that I've done, is around cash flow forecasting, understanding what's gonna happen with cash in the future. Enough about that for now, let's dive into these three reports. So, I might suggest that as, as you're watching this video, have either one of your accountant year ends or have a copy of your financials printed off so you can be looking at them as I'm talking and you can make sense for your particular business. Otherwise, you're going to find this pretty generic and uh, or general and let, you know, not as easy to understand. So grab your reports and let's dive into it. So the first one, sorry, the three reports I'm going to be talking about are the income statement, otherwise known as a profit and loss, uh, statement of earnings, your balance sheet, and your cash statement. So I will just give a quick intro to each of these. Your income statement is essentially a record of uh, how things are happening day to day in your business. It's a, taken over a period of time. So you might look at a quarter, a month, a year, but it's a, a record of events over a period of time. So the way to think about that is like a movie. This one's a movie, okay? It happens over a period of time. The balance sheet, now this is a picture of what does your business look like right now? What's the state of health? Think of it like if you went to the doctor and the doctor took all, all your records, took a blood sample, took your blood pressure, you know, measured your, uh, your pulse. It's how are you right now? And that's the same as your balance sheet for your business. It's how is your business right now? So this one's a snapshot. Snapshot. And the last one, the cash statement, that sort of puts the, uh, the, the link between these two. It says, okay, in the income statement says, in theory, this is what happened in your business. The cash statement says, this is actually what happened from a cash point of view. Again, this one's like a movie. It's got a start and a finish, and you choose the period, the time period that you want to uh, report over. So this one's a movie also. Important to understand, if you really want to get a good look at, your, at the financial picture over a period of time, let's say pick your last fiscal year, you would print off the income statement for that year, you'd print off the cash statement for that year, 
and you print off a balance sheet at the beginning and the end of that year. So your balance sheet bookmarks the beginning and end of the period that you want to look at. That way you can start to see, or you can tell exactly what decisions and what happened financially in your business using those three reports. So let's see what they're made up of. The first one, the income statement. This is generally the one that most people look at. It's the one where they can look to see, am I making money, am I not making money? Now, as I'm about to explain to you, this, uh, this report is in fact a theory. It's based on a bunch of promises of what's going to happen in the future. As I gave you the example before about issuing an invoice to someone, that's based on the promise that they, they intend to pay you for the products or services that you're going to give them. Not to say that they've actually paid for it, it's the intention to pay. That's why when we look at our income statement, it's just one of the tools, it's not the be all and end all to look at. It's certainly a very important one, but it doesn't tell us the whole picture. So what we've got, looking at your uh, income statement there, you've got your revenue or your sales line up the top, and underneath that you might have several different categories, but essentially you've got one, uh, one category there that says sales. Then you've got this one that says cost of goods sold. Now, cost of goods sold is an expense or a cost, but it is directly relative to the sales that you make. Now, it's important to distinguish here between cost of goods sold and expenses. Another way to think about this is that these are variable, these are variable expenses and these are fixed. Let me explain. Cost of goods sold, you only incur cost of goods sold when you make a sale. So for example, if you're selling a product, uh, let's say you're a bookstore, right? And you, you sell a book, you record revenue for that, and here in cost of goods sold, you record the cost of that book that you sold. If you are selling labor, like say you're a service business, and this doesn't necessarily apply to every single service business, but you may record if you, particularly subcontractors, if you're paying a sub subcontractor to do something for you, you'll only incur that expense when you get some work for them to do. So that would fall under cost of goods sold. Once you, you take your sales or your revenue and you subtract your cost of goods sold, that gives you your gross profit. So gross profit refers to the amount of money that you've got left over after you've paid for all of your variable expenses. Now, the other thing, okay, so gross profit is sales minus cost of goods sold. Gross profit. Now, gross profit, this number here is important ratio for us to understand. We want to know what's the percentage here of sales. We want to know, do we have 30% gross profit? Meaning, is this number 30% of our sales, is it 40, is it 50, is it 60? What it actually is doesn't matter, but we want to look to see, is it consistent in what we're doing? And then that's a imp very important number for us to want to improve. We want to improve our gross profit margin, that's called. So when you convert that to a percentage, it's called a margin. It's called gross margin. Down here, you can do the same exercise, look at, uh, look at percentage of net profit to sales, but that would be called net margin. So when people are talking about margins, we want to make sure you distinguish between net margin or gross margin. Very big difference. Typically, people are talking, uh, well, actually, it can vary. So then once we've got our gross profit, this is how much is left over after we've paid for all our uh, materials and goods to supply our, our goods and services. Then we're going to subtract our fixed expenses. Now, fixed expenses are going to be things like rent, utilities, uh, telephone, uh, any travel or education, accounting fees, uh, any other kind of professional fees. And now, these are costs that you're going to incur whether you make any sales or not. Now, sometimes these numbers can go up and down a little bit based on how busy you are or how big your business are, which you could argue, listen, that could be linked to, to sales. But traditionally, you just want to look at, you know, Anything that's staying around about the same, we want to just put into expenses. Otherwise, we're going to get too much fluctuation around our gross profit margin. So the gross profit margin or cost of goods sold should really be things that only go up and down uh, when you make sales. That's it. So to get, once we've, uh, we've got our gross profit, we subtract our expenses from that, and that gives us our net profit. 
And that's the number that a lot of people focus on and look at. And that's fair enough. I mean, you want to make sure that's a positive number. If it's a negative number, it means that something up here isn't making sense. Either we've got too much expenses, our margin is not high enough, or we just don't have enough sales. So we've got our net profit, and then generally uh, we've got taxes, and then after that we finally have a net income. And obviously we pay taxes on what our, our net profit is. Now, I've, the way I've laid this out is not necessarily the way you're going to see every income statement laid out. There could be variations. Your accountant may do it slightly differently. You know, there's, there's probably you know, a dozen different ways you could lay this out. But what I've given you here are the main components that are in an income statement, and um, that should give you a basic understanding. So that's our income statement. Let's move on to look at our balance sheet. So the balance sheet, again, this one is a, a snapshot. It's like a, if you went to the doctor and he took all your, your vital signs, it's how are you at this moment, that's what your balance sheet tells you. How is your business right at this moment? So there are three main components to your balance sheet. There you've got assets, you've got liabilities, and you've got equity. Now I've taken uh, the liberty to borrow from a guy called Keith Cunningham who uh, teaches a lot about financials and he's got a pretty cool way of talking about assets, liabilities and equity. He says that assets, the way to think about it is that it's things and stuff, it's stuff that you've got and then you, on the liabilities it's okay of the things and stuff how much do you owe, like the liabilities is what I owe and the equity is what do you own. Let me give you a simple example for this. If you looked at your, did a balance sheet for your house, right, the house you live in, let's say, let's say you paid $300,000 for your house. That would go on the asset side, right? That's how much it's worth. That's the thing and stuff is your house. $300,000 would be on this side. Then you'd have to work out, okay, how much of that do I owe and how much do I own? Well, let's say for this house you put $100,000 down, 100,000, that means that you would owe the bank 200,000. So you can see by that, that liabilities plus equity equals assets. So that's why it's called a balance sheet, because the two sides, it's called the left-hand side, you people, sometimes you hear people call it, talking about the ledger. Right? This is the ledger, the left-hand side of the ledger must equal the right-hand side of the ledger. So assets equals liabilities plus equity. Now, you don't necessarily need to know all that. I mean, you're not going to be, have to be the one balancing your, your balance sheet. Your bookkeeper and your accountant are going to look after that. All you have to understand is what is this thing telling me? Like, what's on it? So let's explore that. On the asset side, you're going to have some things called current assets. Now, current assets refer to anything that can be turned into cash you know, reasonably quickly. Normally within a year, we would call current assets. So some things that are current assets would be cash, Obviously that is cash, so it's an asset. Accounts receivable, people that owe you money. Prepaid, if you've prepaid any expenses, say you're gonna be going on uh, to a conference in six months time and you've already registered and paid for it. You wouldn't record that on the income statement that's happening right now because the timing would be off, so it goes on your balance sheet and becomes an asset. You've prepaid for it. Inventory, things that you buy and sell, right? Inventory would go on your, your balance sheet under assets. And then we've got fixed assets. Now fixed assets are things like real estate, plant and machinery, any leasehold improvements you may have done to the facility that you're in, and investments. So if you decide to, you had some excess cash, you want to invest in some stocks or whatever, that would come under, uh, under assets. And also loans receivable. If you lent money to someone, that would be classified as an asset. So there are some things under the assets. And then we've got the liabilities side. So the common things under liabilities are accounts payable. That's when you owe people money. You've got loans. So if you've taken out a loan from the bank or from a, another lender, that would be recorded under liabilities. Any taxes that you owe would be under liabilities. And lastly, your line of credit or your operating line, sometimes called bank indebtedness, would be under the, uh, the liabilities side too. Which leaves only a couple of things to be under equity. Essentially, they are the owner's investment or shareholder's uh, investment. That's the money you put in the business to start off with. And retained earnings. 
So retained earnings is a fancy way of saying all the money that has been uh, saved up in the business over the life of its existence. So all the profit that you've made right, adds up over time to be retained earnings. The only way you diminish retained earnings is by paying out dividends. So that's retained earnings. Now, the thing to understand with your balance sheet is that any time a transaction happens in your business, it's going to show up on your balance sheet. Right? For example, say if you wanted to buy some inventory. Well, when you buy some inventory, if you paid cash for it, the cash number would go down and the inventory number would go up. So it all still stays in balance. Let's say you bought some inventory but you didn't pay cash for it, you owed the person money. Well, when that transaction happens, your inventory goes up and then your accounts payable goes up accordingly. So again, it remains in balance. So this one is the snapshot. How does your business look right now? So when you're comparing uh, how you're doing in your business, sometimes it's not too helpful just to look at your balance sheet of how it is today. Sometimes you want to look at, okay, how was it a year ago? How was it six months ago? Or if I pulled up my last four balance sheets over the last four years, you want to see, is this side here growing? Is this growing? Is it be becoming more valuable? The last one that we're going to cover is the cash statement. And this is the, normally the one that most people ignore. In fact, some accountants don't even produce a, a cash statement for you. I think it's extremely important because cash is so vital to your business. I mean, you need, you need cash to be able to pay for your bills. It's tough to pay for your, your bills out of profit, right? You've got to, the other thing is your cash statement tells you is how well you're doing it turning profit into cash, which is a really important measure because if a business runs out of cash, you're out of business. So three components to your cash statement. First is operating cash, investing cash, and lastly, financing cash. So operating cash is the one that's most, I guess, the, uh, the cash equivalent of your income statement. But this is the one that tells you, okay, if you're, say your income statement said you produced $100,000 in income last year, this one tells you how much that you actually turned into cash. So how much cash you ended up with at the, at the end of the year. So let's say, for example, that you did um, have $100,000 in net income. So typically you'd start there, would say $100,000 in net income. But then it might say, you know what, but uh, more people owe you money. So your accounts receivable went up over the course of the year. Let's say it went up by $20,000, right? Meaning that you didn't do a good, as good a job at collecting your receivables. So that would go down. Cash would go down by $20,000. And let's say accounts payable, let's say you got a little more diligent on paying people faster and so your accounts payable went down, which is actually bad for cash because you're paying people faster. Let's say you did that by $10,000. Okay, so now all of a sudden now $100,000 in profit that was recorded on your income statement is now down $30,000 $30, in cash terms. So your $100,000 in profit is now $70,000 in cash because you haven't collected receivables as well and you've paid your bills faster. And let's say you also thought it was going to get real busy or you weren't managing your inventory well and your inventory grew and all of a sudden you've got more in inventory than you had at the beginning of the year. Let's say you did that by $20,000. Okay, all of a sudden now that hundred has become fifty. So if you've ever looked at your um, your profit and loss or your income statement at the end of the year and it says, hey, I made all this money, and then you look at your bank account and think to yourself, you know, where is it? This is what goes on. It's the difference between actual recording on your income statement and the cash, the movement of cash. So the last one I've got on here is depreciation and amortization. So what that, what that is, is if you decide to buy a piece of equipment or machinery and say you want to pay, you had to pay $10,000 for that, that could be perceived as being an expense, paying $10,000, but the tax department says, listen, you're going to get to use that machine for the next 10 years, so we're only going to let you deduct $1,000 a year of that machinery. So in your income statement, if we go back to, the, uh, back to the income statement here, you get to record as an expense $1,000 each year on the purchase of that machinery. And I, after 10 years, that adds up to your $10,000. Well, that's not a cash expense. Like the $10,000 went out when you bought the machinery, but you've recorded it on your income statement, which would 
reduce your net income, but for us to really work out what happened from a cash point of view, we would add that number back in because you didn't actually pay that $1,000 in cash. So that would be plus a, plus a thousand. Oh, 1,000. So here you can see, if this was an example, your $100,000 in profit, we subtract the $50,000 in cash flow from money that's still out there or you've paid to people, and we would add back in that $1,000. So you would end up with $51,000 in cash, $51,000 in cash from operations. Now the next side is, and sorry, just the other point to that is obviously if you want to improve your cash flow, you know the areas to look at, right? Collecting receivables faster, paying bills, well I'm not a huge fan of delaying paying bills, but managing that so you're staying within the, the right cash balance, and then managing inventory so you're not keeping more in inventory than what you need to. Now investing cash, this is essentially like when you bought the machinery, I gave you the example of the $10,000 piece of equipment you bought, that would come out of investing cash. So let's say you bought, um, you bought a $10,000 machine, and let's say you also sold some real estate for $50,000. That would be plus $50,000. All right, so your net investing cash in this example would be $40,000. All right, in this period, we get it. So assets or investments, assets could be uh, real estate or equipment. Investments could be, uh, you know, if you bought some stocks or you, you know, sold some stocks. The buying and selling of assets is what, what shows up in uh, this area here. So, so far, operating cash flow in this example, we had $51,000 in cash, and we got $40,000 in cash from investing cash flow. The last category is financing cash flow. And this is essentially uh, borrowing or repaying debt from the bank or paying uh, dividends out. So let's say in this example that uh, we had some loans and we paid back, we paid back $20,000 in, just in principle, any interest paid on a loan shows up on your income statement as an expense. But when you pay the principal back, that shows up under the financing cash flow in the cash statement. And let's say you also, because you made $100,000 in profit at the start of the year, or sorry, at the end of the year, you thought, great, I'm going to pay myself a $50,000 dividend. $50,000 negative and negative. So you're minus 70000 here in financing cash flow. So if we add all those up, 51000 there, plus 40,000 gives us 91,000, minus 70,000, we end up with $21,000 in actual change of cash. So when you get to the end of the year, you're gonna see that I made $100,000 in profit, but I only ended up with $21,000 in cash. So that's why we've gotta really understand where our cash is going, why this is such an important uh, document. Now I've covered a lot of uh, material here, I highly recommend you go back and watch it maybe a couple of times and look at your financials and as I've made each point, have a look at your numbers and see if you can make the connections to what's going on. Certainly print out your financials for a, a year, remember you're printing off a cash statement, an income statement and a starting and ending balance sheet and see if you can make sense of where all the things have gone, what's happened in the business. Particularly, I like to start with the income, with, sorry, with the cash statement because it really shows the flow of cash and you can see how that may have uh, shown up on your balance sheet. Have fun with it.